In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can clean up text in such a way that we can count things and summarize things. So let's look at some example text here. Over here, we have a list of salespeople. Some of them are lowercase, some of them are uppercase, some of them are mixed case where they've got the first letter capitalized and so forth. What we'd like to do is we'd like to have these all be in proper case so that the first character of the first name and the first character of the last name are capitalized and the rest of the characters are lowercase. We know how to do that. We've done that in an earlier video. We'll do it again briefly in this video. And then the other thing is that we have some summarizing to do. We want to be able to count how many salesperson worked at each store. And we want to sum up the dollar of sales that were made at each one of these stores. And we want to summarize that by store. The problem that we have is, is that our stores or cities have messy names. So we have stores in these cities. And if you look, these, this is Provo. Here's Provo misspelled, all uppercase. Here's Provo again, all lowercase. Here's proper case. We have Orem lowercase, Orem City, Provo City, Linden City. And so not only do we have case differences, but we also have spelling differences and spelling mistakes. And so if we want to be able to summarize all of this, we need to clean this mess up. So how do we do that? Well, to do this, we need to be able to look for these sort of text problems and solve them. To save time in this video, I've already done a little bit of setting up. I've created a subroutine called Sum Sales and I've declared my variables. Since I'm going to have to have a count for each city of the salespeople, I have a count for Linden, a count for Orem, and a count for Provo. Since I have to sum up the sales dollars for those cities, I have Linden sales, Orem sales, Provo sales. So I've created variables for those. I also have a clean city. So I've, I've created a variable called clean city. We're going to start with messy or raw city and we're going to have clean city. I've also got a short city, which I'll explain here in just a minute. We have to sum up this currency, so these sales. So I've just got something called sales as currency. And then I also have person as range. We're going to start looking right here at and Hannah and we're going to do a range that goes all the way down. We're going to have our program be adaptable so that if more people or less people were in here, it would just go down until it hit the last person, complete the processing for the last person and then terminate. To check my math and I just sum this using a sum function. So I just sum this so that I could see what my total sales were. Then when my program does all of this work and comes up with the total sales and adds it together, I just wanted to check figure. I have put in code to write this stuff out. So for each one of these cells, I write them out and that's this stuff is down here. I sum these values up to equal 27. So I have here, here summing up the counts. I sum these up to get this total. So here's where that's all summed up, excuse me here. And then uh, I also have a little thing in here where we pick out the person with the highest sales volume and we list that person's name and then say has the highest sales volume of 865. So what I've got my code doing is, is as it goes down, it's looking for the person that has the highest sales in this period. This happened to be Mary Pippaluk and for 865 and so I've just written a little thing out here saying Mary was the highest. Let's start by solving this problem where we're going to get our proper case all sorted out in this name. We have a worksheet function that we can use to get a clean name which means the proper case. So we can go worksheet function dot proper that's the function name and then we can put in person. Now what is person? Person is what we've declared a range of persons and that's going to be right here going down. So we made a range called person and then it says for each person in this range. So we're using our for each loop right here for each person in this range. Then we're going to do our cleaning up and we're going to do our summarizing. So that's what's going on here. So basically I'm saying go to the first person, get the proper name of person. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Anne Hannah who is inside the value of person, convert this to proper, and then we're going to have that name cleaned up. All right, so Anne Hannah now has been changed from all lowercase. The proper function did its job. All right, now let's see if it gets written in there like it should. All right, so now it's written in there. Now we need to figure out how to solve this problem of being able to get our clean city names out of this. And by looking down here, I noticed that there may be some misspellings and some have the word city after the city name. But the first four characters are always correct. So PROV for Provo is always there. 
O-R-E-M is always there. First four characters out of Linden, L-I-N-D, are always there. So if I set this up then to load this into a variable and then pull off the first four characters, manage the case so that they're all lower or upper case or proper case so that I've got the case working properly, then I should be able to get Clean City set up over here. Short City, which is my name for this abbreviation of the first four characters, take lower case in this, in this, and I could have done it a variety of different ways. Offset, we're gonna go down zero rows and over two columns, and we're gonna take the first four characters of that. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a little bit of nesting, and I don't want this to be confusing. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying, take the left, value but we're sitting on person so we've got to come over so basically what I'm doing is I'm saying we're sitting on person offset over two columns so that will bring us over to here and then from that value which will give us the string what we want to do is we want to take the left four characters we're gonna to have to have another parenthesis out here I see that I'm missing oh there's my mistake right there person dot offset and then we want to have that work. So now let's bring back our position there and see if that will behave itself. All right, so it did it. So now we have the first four characters of Provo and that's all lowercase. Now what we need to do is we need to set up a structure in here so that we can do our summing up based on what that city name is. So we're gonna do a select case statement. I like the select case statement because I think it's a little simpler syntactically than the if else if statement. So what we know out of this code is comes the short city, which in this case was Provo. So we're gonna say select case short city, and then we're gonna go ahead and finish out our select case here. So we're gonna have n select, that's the bottom. That's the, it wraps up the select case. And then we're gonna go case, Linden, so what it's doing is whatever's in short city, then this is gonna say, if that's L-I-N-D, then do some stuff. So let's do Provo next, case, Orem, then we'll do some stuff. We're gonna do a case Provo because that's the store at the other location. All right, so we just use the first four characters because that's what we're plucking off into short city. And then inside of this, we're gonna do the very same thing for each respective city. We're gonna go clean city. Now right now, short city is, is just the first four characters, so we're gonna do something called clean city and we're gonna make those right. So here, the, the full name that we want to have showing up in this case is Linden. So what I'm doing is I'm designating what's the correct clean short city name that we're going to use all the time And here. All right, and then we need to do some summing up. So what we wanna do is we want to count how many salespeople are in each one of these locations. So let's do, we called it up here, Linden count. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say Linden count equals Linden count plus one. The short city's name is Lind for Linden. Then the clean city name will be this version of Linden. And then we're gonna add the first time, the first time we get Linden, this will be zero plus one, then this will be one. So every time we come into this case statement and it does a successful match to Lind, it's gonna bump this count up by one. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sum up the sales here. So Linden sales equals Linden sales plus sales. All right, so now let's do, let's just take this and copy them down here and just change the names. So we've got Clean City with the right name. We've got Linden Count, Linden Sales, typo right there, we better fix that. So now what this is gonna do is this is gonna count our salespeople at each location, sum up the sales at each location. The other thing that we haven't done yet is we're going to have to take the clean city and write that right there. We started off with the dirty city, pulled off the first four characters into short city. Then we went through and from short city, we came up with clean city, which is the full name, but we haven't written clean city back out anywhere. So we need to do that down here. Since we're sitting on person over there in A, then what we need to do here is person offset, come over three columns, value and then that equals clean city okay now we need to bring our sales in and so that will go and get the sales out of this value for each time we go through the loop and go to a different person let's just run this all right so it looks like it went through it did the correct job of putting in the cleaned up names and it counted the people correctly summed the dollars this equals this and so now we've done the job that we needed to do to be able to produce this information 
Okay, so now we need to deal with keeping track of who has the highest sales and how much that is. We need a candidate to start off with to compare everything against. And the logical candidate in this case is right here. Right now, we can just kind of scan down and tell with our eyes who's the highest, but this list might be longer and we don't want to have to do that. We want the code to do that. So one of the things we can do is we can take this as a candidate highest value. And as we go down through the code, we can find which one's higher and replace that candidate with the next candidate. 120 isn't higher, but 224 will be the next candidate. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to say that highest sales equals E2. Each time we go through a loop, we need to see if the new sales is higher than the old. If the new sales is higher, then we can take the new sales and make that the the new highest sales and then we need to keep track of who that person is that is corresponding to this new sales. Let's go ahead and run this through a few people. So there's Ann, Hannah, and the highest sales is 150. Then it's going to run through, and it's going to run through the next person, which is Jim Jenks, which has 120, which is lower. So it skipped that. And then the next person, which is Luca Elias, is going to be higher. The new sales is 224, which is higher than the old highest sales. So when we get down here, it should, say, it should find out that the new sales is higher. It is. And so that becomes the new highest sales. So now the highest sales is 224, and the person associated with that is the new highest name, Luca Elias, which is this cleaned up version right here. So that looks correct. So now we can then let the code continue. And so now it found that Mary Pupalock was the highest, and she had the highest sales of 865.